Hey everyone! Wow. Hello, hello. Okay. It's okay, Lola. It's okay. Hi everyone. It's Rita from Miss Rita to the Rescue and Lola's here as well as Benji who never barks. And Teddy Bear, what are you doing over there? They're all here to greet you this morning uh, for today's cricket chat. We're winding down on our 3D adventures. I hope you've been enjoying yourself in this series. I know I have. I felt like really challenged with this and um, it's been good for my to, to keep my like stress and patience at a good level. I don't know. I, I like to focus on something. When I'm feeling stressed, I like to have something that's kind of like completely unlike whatever I'm stressed about, whether it's like a puzzle or knitting or um, or putting together something 3D that I've never put together before. And so that's why I'm really enjoying it. Now, um, today we're going to make lilies and um, also a fan palm. Tomorrow, I believe we are doing either the fox, which I did finish my fox, although I cheated a little bit because of the hands, the arms, the front arms, but I did finish the fox and um, I noticed it doesn't have eyes, so I don't understand that why you wouldn't put eyes on that but I don't have anything but googly eyes and I think it would look kind of silly with googly eyes so um so I'm going to think about something today I have to go out later on today I have a doctor's appointment then I'm going to visit mom at her new digs and um I'll have to be driving by Michael's um, so I'm going to pop in there and see if I can't find something for eyes. I don't know. What do you guys think? It does look like a corgi, Nikki. I agree. Um, except for the tail. I suppose I could make this into a corgi if I changed out this black on the ears and, um, put like just that orange and sort of eliminate the tail. So, so there's the tail there. And of course our corgis, most of our corgis don't have tails. Um, the Pembroke variety does not, a cardigan stew. And um, we love them for it. And so, yeah, it does look like a corgi. Maybe I can sell them to my corgi friends. They love, love, love anything corgi. Anyway, so this morning, let's see, it's Wednesday. We're already well into the first week of August. I wanted to just give you a heads up on what's coming up. Well, first of all, we are going to be, of course, because it's the start of a new um month, we're going to be um, doing our giveaways again this month. I hope you enjoyed them. This month, we are giving away again uh, Cricut Joy with all the extras, um, like kind of a bundle. That's why I call it the Bundle of Joy. And um, let's see, we're going to do it like we did last month. If you've already won uh, a big prize like this, um, it's best if you, we let other people have the opportunity. So we won't be, uh, you know, if, if you've already won, just, you know, cheer on the others for, for getting theirs. I did receive from Aledra, who was a June winner, a beautiful video that I'm trying to post from her granddaughter, because the lady decided to give it to her granddaughter, and she sent me a, an adorable video. I've got to post it on my uh, page. So, um, let's see. So, we have giveaways, and then, of course, we have our monthly giveaways, and then we also have our Zoom call, which... Um, we normally do like the second Saturday of the month. So that would be 
August 14th. It's right in the middle of the month. It's actually next Saturday, not this coming Saturday. This coming Saturday, we will have date night. And I'm kind of thinking that we'll end up doing the sandcastle on date night because it's kind of big and, and, uh, and sort of, it's a big project, might attract a lot of people to it. So I think Saturday night might be a good thing. And we'll probably be kicking off the Bundle of Joy uh, this weekend and run it for at least two weeks. Let's see. Um, so that's that. Next week, we'll be starting on uh, freebies with an emphasis on back to school but there's also some cards because I'm so wanting to make cards I've been making these things 3d things for so long that I forgot how to make cards no just kidding I didn't forget but I like to make cards and my mother thinks that there's some sort of enterprise in there. So she spent a couple of weeks going through all of all of my inventory, um, meaning she went through all the cards that we've made for the show. And um, she said, you could sell these, you could sell them. And so I said, well, go ahead and you can organize them because she likes to sort things and she did into boxes and it's really it was a nice thing for her to do so who knows maybe you'll be seeing a little sale of all the different things that um we made you created a mug monster what did you oh you gave your mug press to somebody um i will be at my grand's but you could still make it can't you don i don't know um, okay, so before we get really started on this, I just wanted to uh, welcome anybody new and also remind people that um, I am an independent uh, artist. I don't know if I'd call myself an artist, but maker, and, um, and I do benefit from your support, whether it's directly through Patreon or... Um, indirectly by watching my videos uh, or buying things using my affiliate link. So do take advantage or give me stars. That's a direct. So there's direct and there's indirect. And um, any way that you support me would be great. Indirect, it doesn't cost you anything, you know, because you're just watching and enjoying passing it on, uh, commenting, but that all does help in the search engines as well as, you know, like the YouTube and Facebook engines. So do, if you have been following me for a while, continue to do so. And I do so appreciate that. So thank you. Okay. So today we're going to be making a Lily, if you are new, you may not have heard me talk about this, but I have this saying. I've been saying it for years, um, and I've, I've actually, um, I've actually thought about opening a gift shop called Gilding the Lily, um, and that's what I wanted to make today is a gilded lily. I don't know if you've ever heard the term gilding the lily, but it basically means, um, it basically means to add ornamentation to something that's already perfect, that's already wonderful and beautiful. So when I say something like, well, if you want to gild the lily, you can do this that way. So I thought that would be kind of a fun thing to actually create a gilded lily. And that's what I did here. I used this gold, uh, it's like a metallic, it's a text weight type of paper. And, um, and yes, we all need at least one gilded lily, I think, just sort of to remind us that you can perfect the perfect. <laughs> so um, we're going to do a gilded lily. We're also going to do a palm frond. Um, and I'm going to talk all about the steps to making this. This is on a uh, floral wire. You're going to need some special equipment to do it. I want to just show... Isn't that amazing? I would love to have a gift shop someday, someday. I'm going to have a gift shop. And um, yeah, 
So anyway, these are customizable. Some of our projects that we've been working on are not customizable, but if you pull them into Design Space, hopefully, thank you, Patricia. Hopefully, um, yep, yeah, there we go. So here it is in Design Space. Now, these are really big, um, and if you were to uh, to cut them at this size, you would you would be using a lot of paper. And I wanted something that was kind of realistic looking, so I could create a whole bouquet. So um, I am going to change the size of this. So this comes in, and you'll notice that it has six petals. This is for one lily. So if you want to make more um, to get a whole bouquet, you're going to need to make uh, more of these. So there's six petals and each petal has a score down the middle and also these dots. Um, and the dots are made with a pen um, and the scoring, you can either use your scoring stylus or your scoring wheel. I used my scoring wheel and I used gold, as I said, gold text weight paper and gold um, gold pen. Although it's kind of funny, it sort of came up at a different color, but there's one of my leave, my petals, you see. Um, and these petals are actually, one is a little smaller than the other, and there's three and three, okay? So there's three smallish it's not that much smaller. See, there's only a tiny bit of a difference here, but um, they are smaller. And then you get four uh, leaves because, you know, the lilies have those big, long leaves that sort of come off. And this is the sepal and this is the stamen. Um, and I cut this out out of a very light, regular weight, like a medium weight, and also the leaves out of a medium weight um, paper. Okay. So let me just show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to hit make it. Oh, wait, I can't do that. I have to change the size. So I'm going to group all this together and choose a line center. That helps me to see how big each like the maximum size of the pieces will work. Now you'll notice that um, as it is would actually work on the joy. The only thing that wouldn't work on the joy is the scoring. So keep that in mind if you want to make this for the joy. So because um, it's only like not even four inches wide. If you want to make it at this at this size. But I actually want to make this a little bit uh, smaller. So even though it looks sort of smaller, I'll get kind of closer here. I made it as a group um, about six inches um, as the maximum. And that is done based on the largest, you know, now I'm, I'm measuring my largest. I think I made them uh, five inches. So I, I think somewhere between five and six inches high would work. And then when I hit make it, because I want a whole bouquet of these, um, I'm going to change the project copies here. So you change the project copies up here on the left, and you'll notice that this uh, sp spreads out into three different mats. And so you can um, just go and put, I don't know, two or three at a time that you can cut. You could cut more if you wanted to. But remember, I'm using text weight paper and for the petals. And so I need to arrange my mat so that it works with text weight paper, which means I need to change the mat size or the material size um, for the petal. So I have four copy, four of these that I'm going to cut, which works fine because I can do eight and a half by 11 on this. Um, I'd use a 12 by 12 for this, but then I get to the petals and you see that there's quite a few here and it would not work with eight and a half by 11. Now, there is a very hard way to arrange this, but there's also a very simple way. And I'd rather just show you 
um, the simple way, and that is by changing your material size. You maybe have never noticed this, but this is called material size right here. And you just click on this. It's like a down, drop down box. You click on that. And let me just sort of scroll so you can see. And you see that it's 12 by 12, which is the size of a regular mat. Um, and then we can scroll and look for eight and a half by 11 which is the size of my paper. Uh, it's the same size as like a copier paper or laser paper or whatever. So I'm going to choose eight and a half by 11. And what you'll see is that it has um, done this for all of my pink just for the petals. So now this has um, has stretched it out to being three pieces of paper. Then I look at it and I think, I wonder, um, that's going to waste uh, some of my paper. Maybe if I did these three at a time, it might be better. But if I did do that, I still need to go back and change my material size. Because whenever you make a change in the quantity, um, it goes, it sets back to original. So here we go. So we have two, uh, two pieces of our text weight paper that we're going to do in petals. One mat where we'll use a 12 by 12, or we could, if we wanted to, move these little doohickeys over and cut it out of an eight and a half by 11. And we don't need to change the material size here, but I wanna show you what would happen if you do. It's going to, um, it's going to change the orientation. So if you wanted to do this, I guess the point that I'm trying to make here is um, you don't always have to tell the machine that you're using eight and a half by 11 inch. If it's helpful to you, then fine. I find it a little bit limiting because I can often get more things on there than the machine thinks I can. But you can do it if that's what you're going to use, okay? But it, it is not required to do that and it might see how it orients uh, sort of portrait style and this one orient portrait style. I often like to put my eight and a half by 11, like on a landscape. And so to me, this is a little bit um, different than what I like to do. So um, we can go back and just do 12 by 12 for the green and 12 by 12. And you'll see, I'm still going to be able to put my eight and a half by 11 inch there. Okay, so let's go to the petals. We're gonna hit continue. The petals, as I mentioned, do require a pen and also, um, and also uh, the scoring stylus or scoring wheel. So I wanna just show you this paper that I'm using because this is important when you're choosing the material that you're setting it up. So this is called text weight paper. You know, it's the kind of thing, um, it's the kind of thing uh, that it's very light. You'd put it in, you, this goes really beautifully into um, your printer. And I don't know, I'll get real close so you can kind of see, um, I don't know if you can kind of see it, but it is metallic, and I really like that. And it would look really beautiful for invitations. I bought this pack of paper um, at Amazon, and it's 100 sheets. I got 20 sheets of this pretty, like, pinkish color. Now, this is white, and there's a navy, and... This is sort of like a silvery, and then there's the gold. So we're using the gold because our gilding means to gold. Um, oh, I forgot to mention that when I was preparing for this, um, I did look up kinds of lilies um, and also where the term gilding the lily came from. And you'd be um, interested, I think, to know that it's actually a a misquote from a Shakespearean play 
uh, called King John. And uh, I wrote it down because I was so fascinated with the, um, with the quote. It says, um, the original quote says, to guard a title that was rich before, to gild refined gold, to paint the lily, to throw perfume on the violet is wasteful and ridiculous excess. Um, so yes, we are gilding the lily. So in this, in, in the original, they're talking about painting the lily, not gilding the lily, but the original meaning, which was basically um, adding unnecessary ornamentation to something that's almost perfect on its own is so comes through and um, that is Shakespeare also want to mention too that um, there are many types of lilies as you know there's Easter lilies there's calla lilies there's stargazer lilies um, and there's trumpet Asiatic li uh, lilies there's even um, like hybrids where they're called Orion pet meaning um, they're from Asia mixed with a trumpet that they call it Orient Pep, Pet. So I thought that was really cool. So anyway, here we go. We're back to being talking about our cricket, and I am going to just show you how I put this in. You notice that I need to add a pen in. It's telling me I need a raspberry pen, but I'm not going to use a raspberry pen. Instead, I'm going to use this gold pen that I have. Uh, it's a medium tip 1.0 gold tip pen. And then I did, so the paper from Amazon is, um, it's called uh, text weight metallic paper. And this one was a sampler. Okay, so text weight metallic paper. And I will post a link for you um, for after the video. So if you want to pick it up at Amazon, you can. It was $10 for 100 sheets, which I thought was very reasonable. Um, it, also, if you follow Leah Griffith, she does use this kind of paper quite a bit. So if she may have some in her in her store, but um, this I found on Amazon, so I will put the link in. Okay, so I have my paper set up, and one other tip that I will mention is when you're working with this kind of paper, it's a little more delicate um, than than regular cardstock. I would suggest you use a fairly new mat because um, it, it, the little thing, or very well cleaned mat, okay? But the little things, yeah, it it's kind of like shimmer paper, but I will tell you um, it's called frosted paper. Okay, so so someone's asking about the Michael Shimmer paper. The Michael Shimmer paper is nice. However, it is white on one side. So if you're looking at the pink and you think, oh, I'm going to make a beautiful pink lily, um, you will have one side of your lily be one color white and one color the color. Okay. And so here, this one is both sides. That's what I liked about it. Okay. So, um, Let's go over here and I'm just going to show you what we need to do to get this started. I have my paper on a very new mat, which is really good because this is kind of light. This could also work on a blue mat if you wanted to do this. I'm going to cut this on cardstock for intricate cuts. Now, before I get started, I need to take out my blade and my housing and put in my um, scoring wheel. If you have a scoring stylus, you don't have to do this step. You would just put it in here and keep this in, keep your blade and housing in there but we have a maker and we're going to use these special tools and we're going to put them in here and clamp that we're also going to put in our pen um, before I know that a lot of times you put in the pen afterwards but what I found when using the maker if there's scoring and then writing it will 
go through without stopping. So unless you have a really quick hand and you put it, it just makes sense to put it in there ahead of time. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll just get this going. And um, it's gonna do the scoring first and it's going to put quite a few petals onto my, my paper. The thing that concerned me about this paper is lifting because it does lift. And one of the things that I noticed that's different about the three, the Maker 3 and the regular Maker is that it's really rough with, uh, with your mats and it sort of pulls things in. And if your paper is not really well stuck onto your mat, which is why I said use a newer mat for this. If it's not really well stuck and you haven't taped it off, then um, your paper can get jammed inside or it can just sort of stop and you end up with a red light. If you ever end up with a red light, it means that something's gone wrong. It may not be a jam, but nine times out of 10 when, it, when this has happened, and it's happened to me a lot because I really push the limit <laughs> with my machines. I don't want to give you the, I don't want to give you the impression that, um, that this happens a lot with these machines. It happens a lot because I push the limit. I want to find out how long can a mat last. <laughs> and so I end up, you know, taping it off or how long will a blade um, last and I tape it off. Uh, I mean, or I leave a blade in there. So I push the limits often. And so what ends up happening is um, I get jams. When I get jams, the, the color of the on will turn red and it will stop and and sometimes it will jam underneath the roller so if that ever happens to you turn the machine off and then give it a second and then turn it back on and then eject the uh, mat entirely because uh, it's finished you're not going to get the use out of this all the scoring is done, by the way. And now it's doing the little dots on the leaves, okay? So um, if, it's, if you get a jam with the red, turn it off, then turn it back on. Sometimes the machine will automatically kick up the mat, but um, the best thing to do is just to get that mat out. Now, if you have to sort of tug on the mat a little bit because it's really stuck, that's okay. It's also okay to, when the machine's not in use, to move the carriage around a little bit. So sometimes the paper will get stuck underneath and by moving the carriage, I mean, not gently do it. Don't like manhandle it. But one of the things you want to keep away from is touching this bar. See that round bar sort of in the middle? And that's because it is greased. That bar has a little bit of grease in it that allows the carriage to move from left to right and also, you know, up and down. So um, do not touch that. If you touch it, you'll end up with black stuff on your clothes or fingers. And um, and also, it eventually, if you keep touching it, it could cause problems um, along the way with your machine. That's just general for any of the Cricut machines, okay? So um, you don't want to touch that. It's sort of like on a train. You don't want to touch the middle at least on our trains over here in Boston, you know, don't, don't touch the middle, the middle track or you'll get electrocuted. Um, so that's how that works. So, so, um, there's that. So in case that you were, again, going back to the, to the jam, um, eject it. And then what you're going to do is you're going to look you can even go around the back of the machine, but you're gonna look here and in the back for any of the paper that might have jammed. Check on here on these little guides as well. And then also take your uh, housing out and check your um, blade, because sometimes things get stuck in the blade and then it will reduce the performance. That Just because you have a jam doesn't mean that um, your machine is broken or, um, or that you can no longer use the blade you're using or whatever. You won't be able to use the paper that 
probably won't be able to use the paper that you had worked on. Um, but aside from that, the machine should clear up just fine. Now on the screen, if you, if you have a jam in the middle of a process, you, you'll notice that the screen will, um, will just kind of freeze and in that event you have to jump out of your um out of what you're doing to get it to go again so even though you've cleared everything from the machine you need to uh sort of start from the beginning with your project so you have to go back you have to cancel and go back to that second screen and then advance it again to the cut screen um and i hope this isn't too much overwhelming but this is my these are my experiences and i just thought it's useful to know that um sometimes the machines will jam most of the time it's because you made a mistake now it's it's done so i'm going to take out my scoring wheel and put my blade in i could also take my pen out now if i wanted to and recap it so that i have um a nice juicy pen for the next time make sure you put those caps on and pens uh, unless they're gel pens always get stored cap side down like this Okay, and that's to keep that ink flowing inside. Yeah, this is shimmer. It, I guess you'd call it shimmer paper. So um, now it's just doing the cutting. And then when it's done, I guess we'll just kind of go through it. Um, so again, if you have a jam, don't freak out. And I know the first time that I that I did this and it got a jam I freaked out because I saw that red button and I thought oh my god I broke my machine I didn't break my machine turned it off gave it a second turned it back on again and then just handled you know any jam I mean and it was really jammed it was like super jammed right here and I thought oh my gosh I have just done it and so I don't want you to have that experience where you feel like you've ruined everything <laughs> like me <laughs> I've had that experience anyway so um it's almost done with our petals um the paper type that I used was um cardstock for intricate cuts because I wanted cardstock for intricate cuts. These aren't necessarily intricate cuts, but um, I wanted the machine to kind of slow down. And that's what I've noticed with the intricate cuts. So here you go. Here's a whole page of petals and I can just peel this off and you'll see there's our petals. This you might be able to keep that little extra there, but for the, for the purpose of us, I'm going to just throw it away. And here you go. Now, when you have a new mat, you need to be patient with that mat because it is super sticky. And so when you're taking things off the mat, at least when it's new, you're going to want to like roll it off. You see what I'm doing here? This is a brand new mat. It's very flexible. As mats get older, they do lose a little bit of their flexibility. However, you can um, take care of it. They do lose the stick eventually too, and you do need to replace them. But um, it takes a while unless you're cutting out like major amounts every day, which is sort of like what I do. So I am always adding mats because I also don't like to clean them. Just a word about cleaning. Yes, mats can be cleaned, including the Joy mats can be cleaned. Um, but there is nothing like a brand new mat, okay? So, um, so, you know, you can clean them. We've talked about that before. You just need soapy water or a baby wipe and it will take off the paper lint. Paper does leave a lot more lint than vinyl or iron-on. There's really, you know, that's why people who use vinyl or iron-on with their Cricut almost exclusively um, 
they they don't often need to change out their mats. And so they might say, I've been using the same mat for a year. Well, that's because they don't cut with paper. Okay, so eventually mats need to either be cleaned or replaced. Okay, so we're not going to cut out the other pieces because I already have them cut out. But I will show you that these are the ones we just got done with. And see how they have a line here. And they also have this little tab. Okay, so we're going to fold on those lines just to give the petal some shape. But I'm going to show you how we're going to also... Um, we're also going to sort of curl it like this. So first thing we want to do for each stem, we're going to need three of the smaller petals. So see here, these are small. So we need three of those. One, two, three. And three of the larger petals. That one doesn't look larger. It's snuck in there. So one, two, three. And oops. This one, is that right? <laughs> okay, one, two. And honestly, the the difference in size is so minute that if you mess it up, that's okay. I don't think anybody's gonna notice, okay? Unless you're putting it in for some award at the Topsfield Fair. Um, okay, so here are all of our petals. We're also going to need our little uh, sepal and our stamen. Now the stamen, they asked that we cut this out in a light green, but when I read the directions, it said to take an orange pen. So I did, and I colored with an orange pen on both sides. What did I use for a pen? I used my alcohol markers. These are the ones that I, I, I might have, I think I and posted about these in one of our uh, when we started with alcohol inks and when you get this and i got these at uh, amazon there's 120 colors they give you these these are called color swatches and then you go through with your markers and you fill in you find the number and you fill in the box so in this case i can now see very quickly that Number 22 is French for a million. Number 23 is orange. And what else do I have here? I have 22, 23, and 24 marigold. So even though there's no name here, this actually shows me what the uh, pen is going to be looking like. We also have that with alcohol inks. It's kind of like a it's just a color to watch in card, and it's really useful to have. I actually put it right on the top of my um, of my pen set, but you can do with it what you want if you feel like hanging it up or something like that. But take the time and do that. Plus, you'll get used to how the pens work, and I use both sides. And if you make a mistake like here, you <laughs> this is what I did. I put the wrong color in there. I don't know what I did. I think I used... Uh, I don't know. But anyway, I put the wrong color for baby blue, so I actually put it over here. Um, I will mention, too, that the 120 marker set comes with a few uh, fluorescents and then with a lot of grays, incredible amount of grays, because, um, and then also here brown. So, um, But the grays are for people who do animation. So um, I haven't found a super good use for those yet, but I'm going to use these, and I'm just going to show you how I did it. Oops. Okay, so you probably want to work on a protected surface, but I don't. <laughs> um, and so let's us take one of these unpainted sur one of these one unpainted stamens, and my markers come with two tips. This is a fine tip. This is the chisel tip. Chisel tip is good for filling in. The fine tip is good for outlines or for smaller things. These are alcohol ink, so be careful that you're not sniffing them. Um, and uh, we, they will, they will um, bleed a little bit, bleed through. But I'm going to do this on both sides. 
just because I want it to look sort of authentic. While I am talking about pollen, I will tell you that if you ever buy real um, lilies, you need to take this this part actually out of the of the flower but when we're making um because it's toxic to animals um also it is messy um and if once you get pollen stuck on your um clothes hands or whatever it will ruin those um things so just go ahead and take them out using a wet paper towel on a new one or just make paper ones right so this is what we're doing we're just painting the tops which is where the pollen it resides in a lily um and it just takes a few seconds to do and it just looks a whole lot more authentic okay so that's what we do with the marker so we're going to need let's move these markers over here we're going to need our three big three small we're going to need one of these stamen one of the sepal and then we're also going to need um, four leaves we need to have two larger two smaller um, same thing with the if you can't tell the difference then probably the person you're giving to can't tell the difference either so if you if you got that all messed up you can go ahead and uh, just do your thing I don't think anybody will notice <laughs> is what I'm saying so here's here are the small so we need two of those and here are the large so we need two of those I'm going to put everything else aside I do have my glue gun heating up and um, I'm going to use this which is a floral stem wire it's much uh thicker than the regular wire this is a regular wire that you'd you'd buy it's got a very thin uh, feel to it it's very flexible we're going to use both and we are going to let me just i actually cut these in half because they were way too long but it ended up causing a problem on the end made it kind of a little bit so I'm using pliers to cut that okay then we're going to take um, and we are going to start with our stamen I do have my my glue gun heating up I don't like glue guns you guys know that but um, in this case I do feel like it's necessary to use it and I actually put a little too much glue on there I'm just kind of wipe it off over here so we're going to take the stem and it's so messy I'm sorry but we're going to wrap the stem like this if you can do this without glue or you can use your barely art glue you could do that as well um, it's up to you how you want to do it it's no preference well actually my preference would be barely art glue but I didn't start that way okay so there's our stamen I'll use this to close it up okay and you might have to hold it a second to make sure it closes if you use the liquid glue. That's the benefit of using uh, real glue, I mean hot glue, uh, is that it, it pretty much sticks right away. Okay, so there is our stamen. We're going to put this aside for a little bit and we're going to work on these um, leaves. So again, I have the small and the large and we're going to make sure we gently fold here at the seam or at the score line here. So let's just work on the yellow, I'm sorry, the smaller of the three. And you see how they're pretty gilded? So, um, and here is a tab. So make sure you kind of fold those tabs over. You're gonna need to do that. All right. And we're going to glue, oops, not this one, this one, because <laughs> we're gonna glue them to each other. So I'm going to take and glue that second tab and I'm gluing it like this. Hold it for a second. 
so that it stays. And then on here, I'm going to put glue on this tab. Hopefully that stays. Like this, okay? Then, now these dots, you'll notice those are, a, a lot of Asiatic or tiger lilies have those dots. And, and so that's why I left them in. But if you don't like them, you can take them out if it bothers you. But I kind of like them. All right, so now we have the three and we're going to turn it into a bit of a cone. You see, we have a little hole in the bottom here. So we're going to glue that last tab and glue this together and allow it to dry. While we're waiting for it to dry, we'll go and do the same exact thing with our larger petals. We're gonna fluff these petals, don't worry about it, so that it looks like a lily, but uh, I want it to dry first. Okay, so there's our three larger. We're gonna fold at these tabs. Okay, and glue, do the same exact thing. Glue the tabs, and they're kind of at an angle. They're not like this. They're at an angle, and this is text weight paper, so it's lighter than the cardstock that you're used to working with. So keep that in mind. You definitely need glue to put these together, but just don't use a whole lot, all right? Just a few drops that you put on there because you don't want it to turn into a mushy, messy piece. Just give it a couple of seconds. And once you feel like they're all t connected, then we're gonna again, turn it like upside down if that helps or we're working from the backside, we'll put a little tiny bit of glue on that tab and make sure we hold that tab there. So we have two, like three petal pieces and each of those have the holes in there. That's gonna be important for us later on. Okay, so there and there. So there's our smaller one. And actually the smaller one is gonna go inside of the larger one like this and they sort of get um, they're like not, they're sort of overlapping. So it looks like a full flower like this. But before we're going to do that, before we attach it to the stamen, I'm going to take, where is it? My scraper. Here it is. Um, and I am going to very gently and with my thumb here, and you could do this before, but I'm going to take my scraper and very gently curl this here. Each of the petals like this. Now the, the, the amount of curling you do really kind of does depend on how old the flower is. So if you wanted something that was really open, as you know, you know, that's like kind of an older flower. So you can do a whole lot more or you can just do a little tiny bit. I happen to like the fully open lilies. Um, then you can see those little polka dots on the inside. And there we are. And again, we're going to, isn't it starting to look like a lily? Isn't that great? So there are our two um, leaves. So I'm going to, hmm, I'm trying to debate, should I put a little bit of glue? I'm gonna use a little bit of my glue gun glue just to get these two in there because I don't want them to move. Otherwise, it kind of ruins the effect of the flower. So I've got these two in here, trying not to get burnt by that glue and make sure that it's where I want it to be, right? Then we can actually take our stem and push it through, take off this glue, push it through here. We've almost done. Isn't that beautiful? Just so you can see, we're almost done with our gilded 
lily. All right. And we're going to take the sepal. It has a hole in it, but it doesn't show up when you make them smaller. So you can just take your uh, weeding device and sort of poke a little hole in it, just sort of by hand. And we're going to shimmy it up the wire. As long as you don't have a problem with the end here. Ah. Okay, here we go. Shimmy. How come it's not shimmying? The hole isn't big enough? Maybe it's not big enough. It's a very small piece. And the hole is almost there. The hole is better. Okay, so we're going to shimmy it up. And then we will probably, because it's not really connected, you see, um, because we didn't like glue this on there, we're going to probably just use a little tiny bit of glue from the hot glue gun if you can. Um, you might be able to use liquid glue for this, but I really feel like it needs to be hot glued. All right. Okay. Yeah, it's really pretty. Um, and then we're going to do the leaves. The leaves also have um, little here they are they have scores and you'll notice one has a blunter end than the other here we go all right so we're just going to score them down now this is where i use my um my floral wire and I like to put my uh, leaves onto this kind of like this actually it probably would look better if you put it on the back so the blunt end is actually the end that is facing out try not to to um, burn yourself as I always do with this, but this is going to be good because it, now I've heard that, um, and I've actually seen that Ly, um, Leah, I was just going to call her Lila, but Leah uses, um, Aileen Tacky Clue, and I've actually seen her do that, and she actually takes this and sticks it right inside of the bottle of Tacky Glue, but I can't find my Aileen, so I'm using this and you could use probably liquid glue in a pinch if you wanted to. That's my only point there. Now, once it's stuck on there, we're going to also turn this out. Maybe not nearly as much, but sort of nice and turned out because that's the way they look in real life. Like this. We're going to do this for four of them. And so here's my wire. I got glue all over this. And <laughs> so I'm going to have to scrape it off with a razor blade, I think. That's okay. All right. So there's our third one that and because of the curve you don't actually see too much of that okay and glue again where's my piece of wire here it is I did buy these wires I believe I bought them on Amazon like where else you could also try um, papermart.com uh, I don't, I think they must sell them in Michael's. They must. Um, so consider there too. I don't want you to have to go all through all ends of the earth to find these 
uh, materials because uh, it drives me nuts when makers will recommend something that they then they don't source it for you okay so here what we're going to do is each of the the leaves are going to go on here like this sort of like side by side like this and then the smaller ones go below it like this I didn't do this correctly but sort of like this one trying to get this all right and they're supposed to be separated so there's two layers okay now if it's helpful to you with your leaves this one's not right let me fix it um, you can take the wire the, the part of the wire that's not used and sort of wrap it around the floral stem because we're going to use floral tape and that's fine. So we can do that and you won't even see this and it will actually make our stem look thicker, which is kind of cool. So see that? Yeah, same thing. I'm gonna play, put it in position and floral wire sort of twist it like this and just keep going along these I want these to be side by side sort of thing like left and right all right okay this although you'll do better than me because my, look at my leaf didn't stick I rushed it okay so we are doing this just like this and then we'll finish it with a little bit of floral tape I'll tell you a little tiny bit about floral tape it comes in several different colors this one I chose because I can't find the dark one that's the only reason um, I normally would choose a darker one and floral tape is basically crepe paper that's covered in a wax and it's activated by pulling on it so as soon as you pull on it you'll feel a stick on it right so um, floral tape is widely used. If you have frustration with it, I hear you because I get frustrated with it. I don't like that sticky feel, but it does make the, um, the flower look finished, okay? And you're going to have to get in here and do it here, but I'm just going to show you from here. You may need to put a little bit of glue on the end just to hold it in place and then definitely gently uh, tug it so that it stays in place. If you want, you could also glue the end of the stem uh, of the, the tape with, you know, down at the bottom of the stem. I don't generally do that. If I activated the tape correctly, I don't need to do it, generally speaking. And it's good to kind of cut off more than you need. And you could work it right on back up if you wanted to. And then between the two, you just use smaller pieces and um, activate that tape. And that is our beautiful, beautiful um, gilded lily. It's a fancy lily for us. And everybody needs a little bit of gilded lily in their life, right? Um, at least I think so. And I will continue to use that, uh, that phrase knowing now that it came from Shakespeare, which makes me feel even more special. So there's our gilded lily from this side, from the top. Isn't that great? We, um, we did run a little bit long, but I wanted to show you these uh, paper palm fronds. The, this cuts out in three pieces. This piece... Um, which is for the stem and then these two pieces which you fold like accordions one has these tabs on the end and what we're going to do is just sort of line up large to small like this and then we're going to go ahead and glue these tabs into place 
so that we create almost like a one big piece and we can do that here just like this I think actually I think glue gun it's gonna work better for us and once we have all of this in place <laughs> I'm just gonna I'm gonna take a shortcut and I'm just gonna do the bottom pieces. <laughs> all right. But once you have it all in place, it's all folded and get it together, then you go and pinch it down the middle. You see that? Pinch it down the middle, and then you will stretch it over so that it creates like a fan. And you'll notice that there is a tab here and that tab is to go on the left side or the other side with the side without the tab. But you're going to do it like this. Now, um, a floral stem would work here and then you just put the floral stem and then you're supposed to use that rectangle piece as that um, covering for that stem. I probably won't, but um, this is a palm front and I think one or two of these um, are enough I'm not sure if you can actually um, make a smaller size but these would look good in a bouquet so if you had say um, a uh, like a really a beautiful bouquet of chrysanthemum well maybe not chrysanthemums but lilies would work and it would look good as a sort of a backdrop for that so that is our um, that's our paper frond. I didn't do it all correctly, but when I take a picture, I'll make sure I finish it up and take a picture. And so therefore, guys, this is our gilded lily. Now, there's nothing saying that you don't have to make these in technically um, realistic colors. You could make these lilies um, in white and then use your pan pastels instead of the dots or use um, use your pan pastels to put a little bit of, that's for a stargazer lily. Um, or just be like, I don't know, be fantastical and um, use the, the gilded. So you don't need to use, I would suggest though, a text weight paper for these because I just feel like they flow a little bit better um, and they look a little more realistic, even though they are gold. All right, everyone. Thank you for sticking with me. I'm sorry that I took extra long for today, but I really wanted to get into some of the details here. And um, I hope you enjoyed this. I'll see you again tomorrow at nine o'clock um, for... What are we doing tomorrow? I think we're doing the fox tomorrow. So I gotta go get that um, cut out. And I did not have the same problems with the fox as I did with the owl. I thought maybe because it was bigger, um, but I did, I, I did it much easier. So we'll go through that, we'll do the fox. And I think Friday we're gonna do the whale's tail. I think that's what I decided. So, um, Sorry, I keep forgetting. Thank you everyone for joining me today and we will see you again tomorrow at nine. Um, and let's see, you can catch us on the replay. If you do watch me on YouTube, make sure you like and comment, share and do all that wonderful stuff because it really does help me and that's the indirect way of helping me if say you don't have a ton of money to sponsor me or whatever. So thanks everyone and um, enjoy your day. Hope you get some crafting in. Take care.